Okay, we're going to do a, somewhat of a lengthy video here on how to operate this 20, what is it, I think it's a 2009 Kingston. Everything is not currently winterized, so to unwinterize it in spring you'll have to do a couple other things. When you first walk in here, there's a panel on the wall that says Gen Set. This does not have a generator, but it's pre-wired for one. So you don't have to do anything with that. Next is a switch here for central vac. It does have central vac. The hose is in the back cabinet and it would plug right into here. And you just turn it on. You can hear it fire up. Here is where all your control panels are. So it has an electric awning. To do that you just hit extend. And you'll see it rolling out there. And bring it right back in. You hit retract. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. There's an exterior outlet. That's what this is here. Um, this is for the two slide outs in the back of the coach. The master bedroom slide out is on a switch in the bedroom. Water heater. This is for turning it on using gas. And this is for turning it on using the electric. This is all your water tanks, your fresh tank, your black tank, your gray, and your galley tank. If you want to use water but you're not hooked up to a hose and you have water in your holding tank, your fresh water tank, you got to use the water pump to pump the water from the tank up to the water supply. This is just a bunch of different interior and exterior lights. And then your scare light and your porch light. Um. It looks like they have a little shutdown guide here that somebody made up. Down below here is your 110 volt and 12 volt fuse panels. The refrigerator is a two-way, so it has auto or it has gas. Um, I usually leave them on auto, and uh, if electricity were to shut off, it'll then go over to gas mode. To open the refrigerator, you pull the handle out and then pull the refrigerator out. Same with the freezer right above it. Pull the handle out and open it up. Both of them are nice and cold. Everything in here is up and operating right now. Um, so we'll try to go through all that. The stove top here. Put the burners to light. You can hear the propane coming out. And then you just hit the sparker. If at any time you change your propane tanks to get them refilled, There'll be air in the system. Sometimes you got to hit the sparker a lot or even use like a barbecue grill style um, long stem lighter. Uh, right above here is the fan and a light. Microwave is right above that. Moving on over here is the kitchen. Um, we're not hooked up to water now, but we have water in the fresh water tank. So I can turn on the cold water here or the hot water. Turn on the hot water, you gotta wait a little bit for it to get hot, so we'll just sit here for a minute. Well, I'll show you something else in the meantime. Lights above the dinette are just controlled with switches here. The TV has a button here to retract it. You can draw it all the way down into the cabinet, or you can stop it at any point. fireplace below. Right now I just have it blowing, or I'm sorry, I just have it showing ambience, but you can turn on the heater as well and you can control the heat setting. And it was blowing hot there for a second, but I have it off. Check the water. Oh, yep, the water is very hot. Shut that back off. Um, chair there. This here pulls out into a large bed. It's a trifold. I believe that's a queen size. It could even be a king. It's fairly large. Nothing in the corner here. I, I believe they either had a desk or it possibly had one more section in here. Turn on the furnace here. Just turn it to on. 
press zone and it'll fire up. There's two different zones, front and rear. You probably just heard that turn on. It'll take them usually a couple minutes before you actually start to feel the heat inside, but you can hear the blower going. After that, it'll fire up the automatic sparker. And then if you got propane, I just heard it kick over now. So it only took about 10, 15 seconds and now it's blowing hot air. Still, you won't be able to feel it in the coach for a few minutes though, because it has to get all the way through the ductwork. This is the cold air return here. We'll leave that running, let it get warm in here. Bathroom here. The water pump is on, so we can go ahead and turn it on. The toilet is a flush on the side here. And you can see it all working there. I don't know if I'll be able to do the shower with one hand, but I'll try without getting wet. See it spraying right there. And of course I got wet. Walking to the back, here's a switch for the back slide out. Let's see it coming in and back out. Uh, there is some thermostats on the walls, standard thermostats. Those are no longer used because it has the dual therm comfort control now. Some people love them, some people hate them. I actually don't like them much because they're confusing, um, but they do work really well. Down here is your, probably a little tough to see in the dark, but these are your dryer, washer and dryer outlets if you decide to put a washer and dryer in here. Just a standard valve on the top. Your front air conditioner is up here and that's located off of the dual therm comfort control thermostat. You can switch to two different zones on there. Right now it's firing the front zone. You can run them both at the same time as well. I'm going to shut it off with the switch on the bottom. Go back to this compartment and I'm going to fire up the water heater. It was already on electric mode before but I had it on gas mode just to show you. I'm sorry, I just turned it on gas mode just to show you. Electric mode takes a few hours for the water to get hot. Gas mode is fairly quick. It's raining now, so I have the camper here in the barn so we can go through it. If you look inside here, you'll see the flames blowing hot on there. If I were to come out over here to this vent, this is where the furnace exhaust is blowing out hot. I didn't realize it'd be so dark, but let's see if we can get some lights going. There we go. Nice light out here. So these valves on here are for winterize and summerize mode. So we're going to have it in winterize mode for you, so you'll have to change everything back over to summer. Also, when you ever you go to empty your tanks, here's where you empty them. It shows there's a black tank, a gray tank, and it looks like another black tank. It's probably two gray tanks and then one black tank. There's only one bathroom. All right. Bottom here is flush kit. Whenever you're flushing the sewage, if you hook up a garden hose to this, it'll help drain the system. This is your city water connection and this would be for filling potable water. And then the exterior hose. Let's so switch in here, give us a little more light. I have this panel removed right here because in springtime, when you go to summarize it, you'll have to turn this valve back into this upright position. When I winterize it, I'm going to have it turned horizontal, but right now it's in vertical use and you'll have to turn it back to that. What that does is bypasses the water heater for winterization. We don't winterize with antifreeze, we winterize by blowing everything out, so you won't have any antifreeze to deal with. 
water pump is back here as well. Also, if you see on the other side, there's a red tank up on the top. That's for your um, Dirt Devil, um, what do you call it, vacuum system, central vac. And I think that should be everything.